was so severe brain damage <laughs> that would shit on the spot, piss wherever he's standing, and when somebody gave him something, he'd eat it, and he wouldn't say thank you because only one was the food. He can't do anything. That would be an honest man. And when you throw him out, he would accept the fact that he was thrown out. Now, uh, you don't mind if I throw you out? No, I was He wouldn't. Not very dishonest. Civilized man is one gigantic series of masks. Oh, very nice meeting you. And then you leave. <laughs> what you bring her hair for? Well, people are full of shit. And somebody looked at me and said, she's pretty. She had a nose job, a nose using thing like that. And they, they can't accept it. There's always a, something shoving some shit around. Most people are very sick, is what I'm trying to tell you. And they can't find love, because in order to find love, you have to be capable of dishing it out. In order to be capable of giving love, your own life has to be in harmony with everything else, and that's not attainable. No one can have peace of mind except what the guy's name in the world is most of us. Maya, Maya Baba? Yeah, <laughs> now that idiot, you know, don't worry. <laughs> as soon as you're walking down the street, you know, and see a bus catch on fire with kids in it, you know, what do you do? What do you do? Be happy? Don't worry? What does that mean exactly? I'm sure if he steps on a hot, red-hot coal, he doesn't say be happy, no worry. <laughs> he moves his ass. You understand what I mean? These, these idiots that are oblivious, they just want you bring them a bowl of food, you bring them things, and they eat it to thank you, and God bless you. As long as you take care of their needs, they can be happy and not worry. Because they don't have to work. You have to work. And so, they give you patterns that can't possibly work. And the reason you can't find love is because love would be a steady state, and a human being is in the process of change continuously. What I, what I said before is, if you fell in love at 17, at 19, your standards would be different. So how can you talk about love? If you fall in love at 35, it would be different than the love of 19. So what is love? It's never been described. So when you fall in love, what are you falling in love with? You fall in love with Rock Hudson when you're 11 years old, and then you find that there's nothing in the cranial case. So you fall in love with John Wayne, and then you find out that there's, there's something missing there. You say, this is, I was only infatuated because I was only 16, but this is the real McCoy. And then I see you three years later, I say, what happened to your rippity sneeze? I said, I don't want to hear his name. But you've fallen out of love with that shit. Because man changes, and man, unless you put in a fixed situation where nothing changes around you, you can remain relatively ignorant and used to the same patterns. So, since man is changing, growing, if you like, or growing negatively, depending on what they read and whom they associate with, so you can grow downhill or uphill, and so your needs change, if you've got anything going on up there. So your needs change. So whenever you fall in love, you can be goddamn sure that you're going to fall out of it. That's a fact. That's called Fresco's Law. Whenever you fall in love, you can be certain that you'll fall out of it. And here's the reason for it. The reason is that whatever your definition of love is, it's not fixed. And you're capable, if you're <coughs> capable of falling in love, here's what it means. But suddenly you're turned on by somebody in particular. It means that you're subjective, because love is very subjective. And it means that there's a lot of wonderful people in the world. And if we were honest or truly Christian, we would love everyone that was lovable. And you couldn't help that. And you still do. But the moral law prevents you from behaving that way. If you go with a guy that you love presently, and you meet another guy that's more lovable, you will love the other guy. You say, I shouldn't be seeing him or talking to him, because I'm in love with Jennifer. Hmm. So you become confused. That's a terrible thing I did. I went to bed with, with Lillian. Isn't that awful? And I married <laughs> Rosalie. And we begin to worry. <laughs> and we go, how, how can we worry? You know, it's like drinking water from this fountain or water from the other fountain. There's somebody else that you drank from that fountain? Go wash your filthy hands. And they, they stained his forehead and tattooed it black. And people make up all kinds of laws regarding human behavior. You never fart on the Sabbath. You eat fish and moxes at the same time. How can you eat ham and moxes together? I mean, these people make up all kinds of laws that are utterly nonsensical. And then there's the other group that's completely far out. They think they want to live naturally. That means no clothing, no house, no lights. That's what natural living means. When a hurricane comes, your ass is gone. Unless you tie it to the pavement. So how do you live naturally? Everything that grows is pumped. Natural oranges are very small. Big seeds. 
and very little juice. And all kinds of bugs all over the trees. That's natural. And natural man, without vaccinations and all that sort of thing, in the early days, wasn't too good. There's a lot of people think that cancer comes from artificial preservatives and artificial coloring in food. And they found evidence of cancer in fossilized dinosaur bones. They find cancer in vegetarians like rabbits, lots of them. Cancer on fish in the South Seas. Leprosy is carried by fish in the South Seas. And so they don't find that cancer is always a product of diet. Sometimes men working in a lumber mill, holding lumber against the side, friction over many years, produce cancer. <coughs> many kinds of things. Sometimes they seem to find a correlation in cancer between nice people and cancer, like guys like Einstein. And some psychologists feel that they were outwardly pleasant, but resented certain things. There always things, you know, you're going that way, why don't you do this for you say, sure thing, you know. But inside you didn't like it. There are a lot of people that always can't say no. <laughs> they got all kinds of problems, because they're always saying no physiologically. <laughs> the toughest thing to learn to do is to say no. <coughs> Isn't that interesting? And a lot of people can't do that. So they suffer like hell. And there are some people that only say no, they suffer too. <laughs> so I'm saying that it seems that living or with organic foods, or living with foods grown in very rich soil, not contaminated, and not chlorinated water, but lots of good, clean rainwater. And if you gave an animal or man the best of food <coughs> and the best of rest and kept him unhappy by uh, making the environment that he's familiar with changing some of the elements in it so he's less familiar with it, if you take a dog or any animal or a person and feed that animal the best in food and keep it unhappy, the food suddenly becomes a lump in its gut. Like I said, if I fed you the best in selected foods as it relates to your metabolic needs, <coughs> and then did something like this. Say you had a dog or a horse that you love very much, or a dog, and it was killed. What happens to that wonderful food? It was like a hard knock day. I wonder what I was doing there. Then you find out you want to throw up. You got nothing poisonous in your system, because your attitude changes. So if you fed a person the best food on earth, and they have a bad attitude, they belch, fart, get constipated, because you live by the clock. Uh oh, I gotta be there at 8.30, but I gotta take a shit, but I gotta take a shit now because I'm late. So you go. And then you gotta take a shit in the office where the boss says, get this out right away. So your asshole contracts. You get used to that. Complete inhibition. And then you type like that, and you hope when, when, the, when the bell rings, you can take a shit. So you rush out there, and you sit there, and you wait. And nothing happens. And nothing happens. So, well, maybe later. And, and so what happens? Our whole lives are synthetic. We get up by the clock. We go to work at 7.15. We get on the motorways. It should be you wake up when you get up in the morning. That's what everybody wants. Whenever the hell you get up, you know, and you, you go you go to school. It's open 24 hours a day. You go into the school, and there are no processed foods because we don't need it. It's good to have foods that aren't processed or used with uh, certain types of chemical agents that might be irritating to man. It would be good to have food that isn't contaminated and water that isn't chlorinated. But it would also be good to have an attitude that isn't polluted. An attitude about life. An attitude, the attitude that prevents you from becoming ill in many areas. And this is what the attitude is called. It's called looking for justice. You get it from religion. Give all the world all the best that you have, and the best will come back to you. Oh, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> That's so full of shit. Jesus did it, and he got crucified fast. Gandhi. And so, if you give all the world all the best you have, whatever comes to you, comes to you. Not the best. That's a lie. So, religion would have to learn how to tell the truth first. And the truth is essentially this. Whenever you talk to people about things that are different than that which they've come to accept as right and normal, they feel uncomfortable and tend to dislike the source. Now, if you really want to get along with people, all you have to do is say, what are you? Say, Seventh-day Adventist? Oh, how wonderful Adventist. What are you, Adventist? Well, how wonderful. Atheist. Marvelous. You get along with everybody. Just sing whatever song is. You want. You go to Nazi Germany, Heil Hitler. You say, where do I sign? Say, any place you go. There's no way you can get along with everybody. There's no well-adjusted person. How can you be well-adjusted? You'd have to get along with the, the mortuary science teacher and the philosopher. You have to get along with them. You get you meet the guy and say, God damn Jews and niggas are lousing up there. And you say, put it there, friend. You get along with everybody. Change your mask. Now, there's no way to get along in the world. People say, 
just trying to get along with people, as though people had some kind of norm structure that's basically sane or healthy. You can only get along with the people you can get along with. And if some people are not worth getting along with, you just have to put out too much shit. So, the first thing you have to learn is stop looking for justice. 